Namaste. A very warm welcome to everyone to the Vedic Astrology Masterclass series. I'm Ms. Jyoti and I'll be your host for this session. Today's masterclass will be given by Mrs. Sarbani Rath. The class is on Chandra Gandanta. Before we continue, I would like to take a minute to share a few hygiene points. The class will be for about 50 minutes, post which the Q&A session will start. Any questions that you would like to ask can be typed in the comment section. The technical team will relay the questions for the speaker to answer them. Before I hand it over to Mrs. Sarbani Rath, I would like to take a minute to give you a brief introduction of our foundation. The Raman and Rajeshwari Research Foundation was founded by Dr. B. V. Raman and his son Sri Niranjan Babu. The foundation is non-profit, endeavoring to revive, rejuvenate and promote the study of Vedic Astrology, Vastu, Yoga, Ayurveda, Vedanta and other related Indian sciences. Under the leadership of its current chairman, Sri Niranjan Babu, the foundation has emerged as a pioneer in the advancement and digitization of Vedic astrology. It has developed distributed free astrological software, digitized astrological content and undertaken path-breaking research in Vedic astrology, including use of artificial intelligence, big data, spatial analysis, etc., and making it accessible to the astrological world. The foundation has also funded and supported various Vedic activities like building temples, sponsoring Vedic marriages, etc. The foundation has established a fund to honor pioneers in the field of Vedic astrology. The eminent list of scholars who have received recognition by the foundation include Dr. David Frawley, Dr. T.S. Vasan, Dr. Bill Levasi, Dr. Arulumallike Parthasarathy, Swami Sita Ramananda, Swami Sukhubodananda, and Sri D.N. Munikrishna, to name a few. Till date, the foundation has organized over 100 events, including conferences, lectures, seminars, and workshops, and has received tremendous support from the press and public alike. If you would like to stay informed about the activities of the foundation, we encourage you to visit our website www.rrrf.in or join our telegram channel. Now I take the pleasure of introducing today's teacher. Mrs. Sarbani Rath is a Jaimini scholar, Jyotish Pandita, JSP and PJC mentor, President Sri Jagannath Center. She started learning Vedic astrology since 2001 from Pandit Sanjay Rath and now teaches extensively in the Parashara Jyotisha course and in the Jaimini Scholar Program. She regularly lectures at international astrological conferences and consults globally. Sarbani is a faculty member of the Department of Contemplative Behavioral Sciences, Sri Sri University, Katak, Orissa, where she teaches Jyotisha in undergraduate and postgraduate classes. She was one of the key advisory members in helping build the syllabus of the department. She is involved in editing and production of the Jyotisha Digest, a quarterly magazine. She has done her postgraduate from Presidency College, University of Calcutta. Before we begin the session, kindly note again that any questions that you might have for our teacher today can be typed and posted in the comment section. At the end of the session, the speaker will answer them one by one. We will now begin the masterclass on Chandra Gandanta. Dear Mrs. Sarbani Rath, over to you. Yes, thank you, Jyoti, for the warm welcome. Um, I would like to pay my uh, pranams uh, to Dr. Bangalore Venkataraman and my warm regards to Niranjan Babuji and to Raman Suprajarama. I hope the slides are visible to everybody. Yes, may I start? So I would like to start with a, a prayer because we are going to be discussing the uh, topic of Gandanta. I would like to start with the Mrityunjay Mantra. 
So, Om Gurave Nama. Om Gurave Nama. Om Gurave Nama. Om Trayambakam Yajamahi Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukami Vabandhanan Mrityur Mukshiryamamritat I am assuming that all esteemed astrologers who are uh, present in today's class are all well versed with the basic concept of Kandanta. So we have had rishis like Narada, Vashishta, Brahma, Shonaka, and Parashara, who have spoken in detail of the dangers and troubles that can befall a person who is born with his natal moon in the Nakshatra Gandanta. This can cause dangers not only to longevity, but to one's life, to one's profession, to one's wealth, and to the entire lineage, the lineages of which they are born from the father's side or the mother's side. For women, when they are married, sometimes their married lineage, the whole lineages can get disrupted, lineages can get stopped, lineages can get destroyed. A person's entire professional life can get damaged. There can be no professional life, no karma. It is not just about dissolution, about wealth. And of course, life and longevity can be affected. Longevity will be threatened. Life will be threatened. It does not mean every time that the person will actually die, which uh, you know many people assume. Now, Parashara has spoken of uh, three main types of Gandanta, that is Tithi Gandanta, Nakshatra Gandanta, and Lagna Gandanta. All right, Ganda means the junction points, the Sandhis between say certain tithis like Purna and Nanda tithis, then nakshatra between joints, junctures or sandhis between nakshatras, and then certain junctures or sandhis between certain lagnas. And the calculation of all these three types of gandanta is not uniform. The calculation of these three gandantas are different. When we talk about Narada, Vashishta, they have particularly talked a lot about nakshatra gandanta. And why is Nakshatra Gandanta so important? Because uh, you know the danger or the threat to life and longevity is very strong over there. Today our topic is Chandra Gandanta. And since where Chandra is concerned, it is placement of Chandra in certain Gandanta Nakshatras that creates these dangerous yogas. We are going to be primarily speaking about Nakshatra Gandanta. Now, according to the calculations as given by Parashala, this I'm very sure is familiar to everybody, Nakshatra Gandanta occurs in three specific points. That is, from the last two ghatis of Revati to the first two ghatis of Ashwini, then from the last two ghatis of Aslesha to the first two ghatis of Magha, and from the last two ghatis of Jeshta to the first two ghatis of Mula Nakshatra. Now, these points, now we are going to be calculating the ghatis, converting them in terms of spatial calculation, because ghatis can be calculated in terms of time, then we can get kala, etc. In that sense, two ghatis can get translated into 48 minutes, like a mohurta. But we are now doing a spatial translation and when we do a spatial mapping then each nakshatra which is 13 degrees 20 minutes we then get from the nakshatra span approximately 12 degrees 53 minutes of revati to 0 degrees 27 minutes of ashwini 12 degrees 53 minutes of aslesha to 0 degrees 27 minutes of magha and 12 degrees 53 minutes of jeshta to 0 degrees, 27 minutes of Mula. So now what are we seeing? If a nakshatra is from 0 degrees to 13 degrees, 20 minutes, so 12 degrees, 53 minutes is absolutely towards the end of that nakshatra. Similarly, 
Zero degree 27 minute is absolutely the beginning of a nakshatra. So this end of a nakshatra and the beginning of a nakshatra, this is what is known as the Gandabda point. Now we will be discussing further into these. This is the primary definition that we actually start with when nakshatra gandanta is. So when Chandra is placed in these points, Chandra can cause these <coughs> threats and danger to longevity, to lineages, to life, to lifestyle, to wealth, everything. Chandra, as all of you know, is the most important graha for Manusha Jataka. Chandra gives the blood to form our body. Chandra rules our health, our longevity, the food we eat, our entire samsara, our happiness and peace of mind in this world. Everything is from Chandra. Even if we have multiple Raja Yogas, great rishis like Jaimini has told us that without Chandra's support, without Chandra's approval, no such Raj Yoga or any other Yogas will fructify in our lives. So we all know that Chandra is the most important Graha. And what happens when this Chandra falls in these junctions between these nakshatras, end of nakshatras and beginning of nakshatras? Now, out of these three, Parashara tells us that the Jeshta Mula Gandanta is the worst of the three. And he has actually then told us that the Gandanta span for this is big, big, big up. It is not just two ghatis of Jeshta and two ghatis of Mula, as he has given for the Devati Ashwini pair and the Aslesha Magha pair. Right? He has said instead we should take six ghatis of Aslesh Jeshta and we should take eight ghatis of Mula. So this works out actually to be 12 degrees of Jeshta to 1 degree 47 minute of Mula. All right. And he has called this big P, this larger Gandanta span, he calls it Abhukta Mula. All right. So we can then revise the degrees to look like this, as you can see in this screen over here. So we can say not just 12 degrees, 53 minutes of Jeshta to 0 degrees, 27 minutes of Mula, but from 12 degrees Jeshta itself to 1 degree, 47 minute of Mula. This is exactly what he actually gives us. He calls this Abhukta Mula. What does Abhukta means? Abhukta means that which is not eaten, that which has not been tasted, that which has not manifested, has not tapped into also, which means this Abhukta can happen with any nakshatra. And when that happens, means that that nakshatra, the light of that nakshatra has not reached us and will never reach us. It is completely unmanifested, abhukta, untasted, untouched. So we can further surmise that if we are talking about junctures of nakshatra that these certain degrees we can surmise that actually the entire last pada of these nakshatras will be affected isn't it a pada of nakshatra which is three degrees 20 minutes it is not just this 12 degree 53 point of revati but the entire last pada of revati to the entire first pada of ashwini the remaining portion of the last pad of Revati, beyond the Gandanta point, will be less afflicted. But nevertheless, the Gandanta energy will very much be there. The Gandanta results will be there, but it will be very much less. All right. Similar in the beginning, up to 27 degrees of Ashwini, it is the deep Gandanta point. Beyond that, till the first pad of Ashwini, the Gandanta effect will be there. So we will say that then it is like a pada dosha. Okay. Similarly, we will say that for aslesha and for magha. We will say that for jeshtha and for mula. Now, we have a scheme over here. Uh, this has been uh, given actually by Pandit Sanjay Rath. It is also in his book, Brihad Nakshatra. And I have taken the table from there. Uh, here we get the results 
all right, of these Jatma nakshatras and it separated according to the male nativities and female nativities. We will be looking into one or two horoscopes and then we can determine and see how this has functioned and we will come back to this table. But just as an example, you can say somebody with Janma nakshatra in Ashwini, Magha and Mula, a male native, right? In different padas, it will give these kind of particular danger. For example, in the first pada, it will give danger to father or to the uh, Pitri lineage. Uh, in the second pada, it will give danger to mother and the matrilineage. lineage. So which means that it can affect the entire maternal line. From that, we can even say it can affect your motherland if you are the head of a country. All right, so the first and second padas over here, you can see for Ashwini, Magha and Mula are dangerous. So it is so dangerous that it can not only affect, and I'm repeating this point, it not only affects the native, but it can affect the entire lineage. That is how uh, dangerous and problematic these Gandamta doshas are. We will come back to this slides later. Here it is for female nativities, the results for different pada of the Gandanta nakshatras. Now, as I mentioned earlier, ghatis can be mentioned both in terms of space and in terms of time. And here we are looking at in terms of space. So this Gandantas occur the Gandantas as given by the Rishis. They occur at the junctures of Agni and Jala Rashis. So it is a clash of Agni and Jala. Agni and Jala are not friendly. When they come together, there is a friction. All right. Nakshatra Gandanta per se is related to Vayu and Prana. Okay. Therefore, to judge the effects of the Gandanta, degree of the moon becomes very important. That is, which exact degree is it in, which pada it is in. And also another point, the lordship of the nakshatras become very critical. The Gandanta nakshatras, if you notice, are ruled by Mercury and Ketu. You can go back again to take a look. You can see that the Gandanta nakshatras are ruled by Mercury or Ketu. Okay, these the uh, the beginning nakshatras are Ashwini, Magha, and Mula ruled by Ketu, and you have Revati, Aslesha, and Jeshta, which is ruled by Mercury. As a result, if the native who has a nakshatra Gandanta, then towards either the end of Mercury or Ketu Dasha, end or beginning of Mercury or Ketu Dasha, the effects of this Gandanta can be felt. So in that case, we must check the placement of Mercury and Ketu in the native's chart. And if Mercury and Ketu are extremely badly placed, then danger to life and health can happen. Now, it is very interesting, this Mercury and Ketu, because Ketu has the power to break Mercury. This is something we learn from Jaimini, that Ketu has the complete power, is the only graha which can break the rajas of Mercury. Bone breakage yogas are given by Mercury and Ketu. So that means Mercury and Ketu combination rule some sort of breakages. Mercury rules joints, Mercury rules Sandhi points even in time, and Ketu is the only graha who breaks that. So it's very interesting that all these nakshatras are ruled by Mercury and by Ketu. The other point that we must remember is that the moon rules Cancer. And when the moon is in Gandanta, it will negatively impact the Bhava it loads. So we must see that moon is the lord of which Bhava. For example, if moon is the fifth lord, then progeny can be destroyed and the native may not have any children at all. Now, here is an example of an Abhukta Mula. Okay, you can see it's a Meena Lagna. And Abhukta Mula starts from the 12th degree of Jeshta. As we said, not 1253, Parashara tells us 12 degrees because it's six ghatis. 
This maps into 28 degrees 40 minutes of Scorpio and the native Chandra is in 29 degrees 41 minutes of Scorpio. This is the fourth pada of Jeshta Nakshatra and it places it in Abhukta Mula. I've taken the example of Abhukta Mula only because this will show the uh, dangers and troubles in a very extreme point. Now, to make matters worse, you can see that Chandra is the Atma Karaka. What does it mean if Chandra is the Atma Karaka itself? It means that the struggles, the hardships will be much more pronounced, will be much more challenging, that it is a karmic challenge itself. When Chandra is Atma Karaka, challenge does come a lot from matters of emotion, matters of family. Uh, the person may be denied emotional stability, denied uh, a family stability. And this is a very true. Now, interestingly, he was born in Ketu Dasha and he was born premature. He was born in the seventh month. Soon after his birth, he encountered many accidents and these accidents were extremely dangerous. For example, in one accident, he fell down. He was in a motorbike and he fell down and a truck comes and up to very close uh, uh, right next to his head and a rod was jutting out but it did not touch him and nothing happened to him and why did he get saved each time you can see that shukra is exalted in lagna so shukra naturally as a shubha graha exalted in lagna will save him each time now where his personal life is concerned he had a very short-lived marriage uh, probably just for a few months and soon after that, after that, he has never married anymore. So he's denied a family of his own and he is denied marriage. And you can see that Chandra is the fifth Lord. And being the fifth Lord, he is denied children as well. Now, if we go back and see what the fourth Pada of Jeshta for a male native tells us in terms of Pada Dosha, then we get this result. You can see here for Aslesha, Jeshta and Revati, the fourth pada right here will give danger to father and the patrilineage. Now, very interestingly, his father uh, was a very, very uh, successful businessman. Actually, he was a very successful professional. He was an award-winning engineer. Later on, he went to uh, become a, one of the uh, top industrialists of his state. Uh, but he, this, his father lost everything. So he lost his business. He lost his uh, own palatial property. Absolutely whatever he had built up was lost. And in the end, you know, he fell ill and he passed away. So there is an effect and there is no children from the side of the native. And the native happens to be the eldest son. So you can see that... Uh, now, the native also worked for a while, and after that, he had his business. So you can see that there were threats to life. There was threats to longevity. The birth itself, uh, it you know, though he was born, he was born premature, and he was kept like in an incubator for a long time. His grandfather, who was a doctor, was worried about him. And this went on for a while, and... But then he survived each time because of the exalted Venus in Lagna. Lagnesh Jupiter has gone to the 12th house. As a result of it, he settled abroad outside India. And after settled abroad, there is some modicum of stability in his life. But then again, no family, no children, a business which he could have done much, much better. So the Gandanta effect and the, and being Chandra Atma Karaka, the native desired to have a family. The native desired to have children, very fond of family, very fond of children. But then that got denied. And remedies did not help. In many, many cases, remedies help. But in this case, the native did not undertake that many remedies. So the effect of the Gandanta was there. Now, usually uh, it is advised many times when such a native is born that the puja of a mula gandanta or a bhukta mula should be done and the remedies have been given by the rishis to us. So people follow it. 
But despite doing the puja, the puja really affects and helps a lot. But the remedies should be pursued throughout the life. And it is with Parashara tells us that if you do, if the, such a native does the remedies, then the person can actually go on to be wealthy, uh, lead a healthy life. He's actually said that in his shlokas, which means that there is a capacity to reverse these conditions. Okay, in many cases, not in all cases. Now, what is a Gandanta? What do we mean by Gandanta? Right? We say that when birth occurs with the moon in these sandhis of nakshatra, it is inauspicious and can be fatal or dangerous for longevity, health, wealth, work, lineages. Okay, Parashara has used the word Sandhi, but he has called these junctures Gandanta. He could have called them Sandhi, just the way we have a Rashi Sandhi or a Bhava Sandhi. Sandhis are joints and joints are transitional points, which are always problematic. But why has he called it a Gandanta? What does Ganda mean? So one of the meanings of a Ganda is that it is a bone joint. Now, what is it about a bone joint? which is so very weak. You can see here in the skeletal, there are different kinds of joints that we have. We have a ball and socket joint, which is in the hip. We have a condyloid joint. We have a pivotal joint. We have a hinge joint. Then we have saddle joints, different kinds of joints. These joints are supposed to be the weakest part of our body. As we grow old and as our bone density gets affected, especially with women post 50, they often get osteoporosis. What breaks are the weak parts of the bone. And what are the weak parts of the bone? Are the joints. So they break a wrist joint or an ankle joint or even rib joints. This is where the fractures occur naturally because they're the weakest part. And when it breaks, then it breaks the fabric of the framework. So you can imagine that the nakshatra mandala, the 27 nakshatras are like a garland which is holding our life together. And each nakshatra is kind of joined and conjoined with another nakshatra through a sandhi, through a juncture, which is almost like a bone joint. And these junctures are the weak points. So Chandra, which we discussed, was one of our most important grahas. When Chandra... In, is in these weak points, then Chandra is unable to deliver. Chandra himself becomes weak. Huh? Chandra loses its functionality. It's like your foot getting caught in a uh, chain lock or your foot getting caught in a uh, stick pad. You can't take it out. So then when Chandra becomes stuck and weak, then we are kind of left lost in the dark. We have no protection. Our protection is gone. So we are exposed to danger. Our life also doesn't hold together. Life is also ex exposed, not just life in terms of longevity, but life as in terms of functionality. So as we said that these sandhis occurred at the junctures of each nakshatra, implying that the intersection points of these nakshatras are very dangerous. So if moon is at birth in any of these points, right, from this definition, we can say not just the three main Gandanta points, which the rishis tell us, but all the intersection points of each of the nakshatras are problematic. They are all Gandantas, isn't it? That means there will be some danger at birth and the nature of these dangers can be ascertained from the Navamsha Lagna. Why from the Navamsha Lagna? Because the Navamsha Lagna is our Janma. Our Janma is seen through the 1-7 axis of the Navamsha Lagna. It is from there that we take birth and then the Rashi chart comes into existence. So the nature of the danger when we take birth can be seen from the Navamsha Lagna. Now, so this is exactly what we have done. We have extended the concept of Gandanta to the other nakshatra intersection points as well. So that when the moon is in the 127th part of the nakshatra, that is in the nakshatra amsha, at the beginning or the end of any nakshatra, right, moon is in a Gandanta zone. That means we can say Gandanta is related not only to the Rashis. 
Because if we go back and we are only looking at Revati Ashwini and Aslesha Magha and Jeshtha Mula, then we are talking about Rashi Sandhis also, isn't it? Because the nakshatras are ending at those Rashis, right? Revati is ending with the end of Pisces and Ashwini is beginning with the beginning of Aries and so for the other nakshatras as well. So, but if we consider that every intersection between two nakshatras can also be a Gandanta point, the beginning or the end of every nakshatra can be a Gandanta point. So when Chandra is transiting the intersection point between any two nakshatras, it is a Gandanta effect. So in these three cases, it is happening at the end of the Rashi. Right? Aslesha ends with Karka and Magha begins with Leo, similarly with Scorpio and Dhanu. Jeshta ends with Scorpio and Mula begins with Dhanu. So these three are overlapping with Rashi Sandhis as well. But there are other nakshatras which can be in the middle of a Rashi. Right? Is that also a Gandanta? It is a Gandanta. Now, nakshatras can be Purna nakshatras or Khandita nakshatras. Now, Purna nakshatras, which are in the middle of a Rashi, like for example, Rohini nakshatra in Rishabh Rashi or in Taurus. It's a Purna nakshatra in the middle of a Rashi. Adra is a Purna nakshatra in the middle of Mithuna. Shatabhishaj is a Purna nakshatra in the middle of Kumbha. So if there is a Purna nakshatra, then the juncture between the nakshatras, the Gandanta effect is minimized. And it is minimized because Purna nakshatras are considered extremely powerful as they have the Sattva of Vishnu. The Akash is dominating. The Akash then is not damaged. Because basically what is happening in a Gandanta, Akash is also getting damaged because there is disruption. Here, the Akash is not getting damaged. And the Sattva of Vishnu is protecting it. There will be danger perhaps in the beginning of life. All right? But people come out of these dangers. Okay? They come out of them. Now, some of these nakshatras suffer from a border problem. And these border problems are created by the junctures of fire and water in the adjoining rashis. Okay? So what are we talking about? We are now reversing this. We are saying that Gandanta occurs at the juncture of any two nakshatras. Now, if those nakshatras are Purna nakshatras, then the Gandanta effect is less and the native will have danger initially and will get over it. But some of these Gandantas have a border problem and they have this border problem because they are in adjoining Rashis at the junctures of fire and water. This is exactly what we have been discussing so far. That is Revati Ashwini, Aslesha Magha, Jeshtha Mula. Right? These Nakshatra Gandantas suffer from a border problem. So there is a Nakshatra Sandhi here. There is a Rashi Sandhi here as well. Because it is the Sandhi or the intersection between Meena and Mesha, between Karka and Simha between Vrishtika and Dhanu. And there is Sandhi of Tattvas between Agni and Jala. Agni and Jala Rashi intersection, right? As well as Nakshatra intersection. So this is becoming doubly powerful. Because this is doubly powerful, this has been isolated, identified by the Rishis, and this is what they are most concerned about. So they are most concerned when Chandra is in these nakshatras. And they are also, they are saying, not the entire Padas, but certain degrees, which we mentioned right in the beginning of our class. But now you understand why we will say that the entire Pada is going to get affected. Okay, are we clear about this? 
Now, this, as we said, that these nakshatras are suffering from border problems. Okay, and this border problem is very much similar to say like a India-Pakistan border situation. Those of you who belong to the subcontinent or those of you who live in India, you know that ever since India and Pakistan were created in 1948 or 1947, there has been a conflict and this conflict is constant and the conflict is messy and the conflict seems perennial. And this conflict or this mess, there seems to be no permanent solution to this. But what one needs to do is manage this mess. Parashara has also told us that if you look at the nakshatra devatas, all right, then the devata of Jeshtha nakshatra is Indra and the devata of Mula nakshatra is Niritti, which is basically Indra is the king of devas and Niritri represents the rakshasas. So this battle between the devatas and rakshasas is eternal is an eternal conflict like between the suras and asuras, so devas and rakshasas, constant messy battles which do not change. Similarly, the border situation of India-Pakistan is like that, that it's constant and messy. And this mess needs to be managed and there is no permanent solution to these messes. Now, the India-Pakistan mess, if we look further into it, is written in the genesis of the Janma Nakshatras of three of the major politicians who were responsible in creating the division of India into India and Pakistan. That is namely Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru and Muhammad Ali Jinnah. It was the chemistry between these three, it was the synastry between these three politicians which created this problem. They divided and separated the land and the people. Now, you would be interested to know that Mahatma Gandhi, we will look into his chart belong, had Atmakaraka Chandra in Aslesha Nakshatra, in Gandanta, Zwaharlal Nehru, Atmakaraka Chandra in Aslesha Nakshatra, not in Gandanta, but in Padadosha. And Muhammad Ali Jinnah, whose birth time, correct birth time, I don't have. But from his uh, date of birth and from his place of birth, we know that his birth is in Revati Nakshatra. So literally, we are having three Gandanta Nakshatras over here. And it was the discord, the disharmony, the disagreement between these three people that is Gandhi and Nehru on one side and Jinnah on the other, the two Aslesha nakshatras on the one side and the Revati on the other. This impacted the entire creation, the separation of the land and the people itself. We want you to think very closely on this. This is the very massive impact of Chandragandanta, that it can actually affect even your the land and the people of the land. So the divide and rule of political astrology is based on Chandragandanta. When the division of India and Pakistan happened, we hear from people who belong to the north of India, people who are from Punjab or from erstwhile Punjab in Pakistan, people who are now settled in Delhi, I live in Delhi and I come across a lot of people like this. Uh, many of you would have seen plenty of TV shows. You would have read books about it. They talk about the pain and pathos of separation, the pain that people went through when there was a division, when the Punjab was divided into two pieces. That created people really suffered. That is a Gandamta situation. They lost land. They lost their home. They lost their property. It was absolutely traumatic. It was so traumatic that people still talk about it. People still cannot forget it. People still make television and movies about it because this was a Gandanta experience. And this was the Gandanta experience because the king of the lands, the rulers of the lands who created 
all three of them were in Gandanta nakshatras. The Chandras were in Gandanta nakshatras. As a result, the impact of that Gandanta divided the motherland and the people itself. So you can say that the king's nakshatra becomes very important. Look at this. Mahatma Gandhi's horoscope, Chandra is Atma Karaka, and it is in the fourth pada of Aslesha at 28 degrees, 17 minutes of Scorpio. All right. You can see Chandra is also the 10th Lord itself. Hmm. So where did it affect the way did the whole Gandanta impact affect? But it was on his karma, that is on his work life, on his Arura. The Arura Lagna is also there. But basically, from the Rajya, from the work life, from his work and profession and karma, that's where he suffered. It is believed that he was not very keen about um, uh, this entire uh, separation or the partition of India, as they like to call it, between India and Pakistan. He was not really for it. That it was really between... Jawaharlal Nehru and Muhammad Ali Jinnah because there was a tussle as to who wants to be the head of the nation. So they divided the nation so that both could be heads of nation. They created two nations out of it. So you can see that he suffered. He did not like it. He suffered. But this affected his Arura also because people now still claim and blame that you know he was behind all this. But in reality, he could have been stronger and stopped it, but he was not really able to do so because of political reason. But this deep Gandanta affected it. Now take a look at Jawaharlal Nehru's horoscope. He is Karka Lagna with Moon in Lagna. And you can see again Lagnesh Chandra is Atma Karaka. And this is in the 18 degree of Aslesha. So it is not in a deep Gandanta point, but it is in Aslesha Nakshatra itself. All right. And if you see which pada, it is in the first pada. And for Gandhi, it was in the fourth pada. So if we want to go back and look at that little table of ours, which talk about the padas, you can see in male nativity, for Aslesha Nakshatra, the fourth pada will give danger to father and victory lineage. See, wherever the lineage is coming up, whether it is the patrilineage or the matrilineage. We are seeing the entire lineage is getting destroyed. And in his case, we can say, since he was, uh, you know, a ruler, a king, then it was, it created the division of the land and of the people. Whereas for Nehru, it is in the first pada. All right. Now, we don't actually have uh, Jinnah's horoscope, but Jinnah's from his birth date uh, and uh, from his uh, place of birth, he was born in 25th December 1876 in Karachi, uh, which is now in Pakistan. Um, and uh, he, it was Revati Nakshatra. So you can see all three of them are in Gandanta Nakshatras, and it is that Gandanta energy which has completely, it was, it was the whole, uh, as I would say, discord between these three that has resulted in the division of the land. The reason I'm bringing this up for you all to show you that we are stuck with just our lives, about my life not being fulfilled or my dangers to my life, which is very important. But it can be so devastating that it can impact nation. It can impact people of a nation to such an extent that they still have a discord. This is the uh, point that I wanted to draw out and show to you. Even in the other horoscope that I showed of the premature birth, you can see how it completely destroyed and affected the patrilineage, destroyed the father and whatever the father was created. Okay, so when we are talking about the devastation effect of Gandanta, it is not just, oh, you know, people write comments to me that, oh, so and so is just born and they die. No. Parashara has now given us 
uh, and other rishis also has given us a lot of um, uh, you know principles on this like when if you're born in the avukta mula the person dies so the father should not see the face of the child at least for you know eight uh, years by eight years because it relates to the eight praharas of a day that is if you are looking at the time analysis of a gandanta till that gandanta effect is gone we can also uh, the rishis tell us that when a girl is born in such a gandanta and gets married then it affects the entire in-laws her entire married family the husband's family can get affected Sometimes the threat to life is so much that a child dies at birth only or the child dies when it's young. But death is always not the only effect. So we can have threats to life, threats to longevity. And in all other ways, it can have very, very deep down effects on our lives. Now, what are the remedies that we are going to look at? Now, Parashara says, that you must worship the devata of the nakshatras. You know, the Vedas, the Atharva Veda tells us, the Yajur Veda tells us that nakshatras are identified only by the devatas. And in the earlier times, uh, people would address the nakshatras by the names of the devatas itself and not by the names. And the lordship over there doesn't become very important. So he says that the devata needs to be worshipped. For example, for Mulagandanta, he has said the Devata for Jishta is Indra and the Devata for Mula is Niriti, that you must make idol of Niriti if it is an Amulagandanta and you have to worship to the entire puja. But he also says over there, not just the Devatas, but he says the Adhi and Pratyadi Devata. So when he's talking about Adhi and Pratyadi Devata, what is he hinting? Is it the Adhyan Pratidhi Devata of Nakshatra? No, Nakshatra is identified only by the Devata itself. So Adhyan Pratidhi Devata of whom? Of the Lord of the Nakshatra. Because Grahas have Adhyan Pratidhi Devata. We worship Grahas through Adhyan Pratidhi Devatas. So who are the two Grahas which we have so far identified? We have identified Mercury and we have identified Ketu. So who are the Adi and Pratyadi Devatas? Mercury is Adi and Pratyadi Devatas, Vishnu and Narayan. And for Ketu, it is the Nagas, isn't it? And Ananta and Naga. Now, we discussed earlier that the male and female natives are affected differently. But this effect that we are getting, these are only broad spectrums. All right, they are broad spectrums. For example, if you say somebody's uh, wealth will be destroyed, it doesn't mean that just the wealth is destroyed. It means that the entire professional life is disabled. Some people have a completely disabled professional life. If they have a business, it may be completely wiped out. Or they cannot do anything in with their professional lives. We meet such people in our lives, isn't it? That is a Gandanta effect. That is a Gandanta situation. All right, so you need to, so that is why we need to worship the deities of the planets for the remedies, the Adi and Pratyadi Devata. Now, for Mercury, as we said, Vishnu and Narayan, so any Vishnu avatara will protect from the Gandanta doshas. Take a look at the Drishkana order of Mercury, and depending on where Mercury is, okay, depending on where Mercury is, which drishkana? If it is in the first drishkana, then we worship Rama. If it is in the second drishkana, we worship Krishna. And if it is in the third drishkana, we will worship Hari. So we have to take the name of either Rama and Krishna or Hari in order to evoke a Vishnu avatara to protect us from Gandamta. We get the hint for Drishkana worship of Vishnu. It is given in Prashnamarga by Harihara. Harihara has told us this, that according to the different Drishkanas, we must worship the Vishnu Avatara. That is called the Drishkana order of Mercury. Now, what about Ketu? Ketu is headless. So we worship those deities who have lost their head. And instead, a different head has been put on their neck, such as Ganesha. 
writer's head was chopped and an elephant's head was put. They are known as Veda Murtis, like Hanuman. He's got a all Vayu Putra. He's a, a human body, kind of with a monkey face. So they are called Veda Murtis. By worshipping these Veda Murtis, Ganesha or Hanumana, they can protect us from the negative effects of Gandhanta as given by Ket. Even the Nagas in such a case can protect. We take the case of Tulsi Das. Tulsi Das uh, had a very Gandhanta kind of an birth, very, very problematic birth, very problematic childhood, extremely problematic childhood. He was in such a condition that he would eat from the birds, that food that has been given to the birds, the food that has been given to the animals, People who feed animals, he would take food from that and eat. He was in that condition. Extremely sad, pathetic and very, very destroyed childhood. But he rose from that situation by worshipping Rama and by the protection of Hanumana. With that, he rose and he is, of course, immortalized now. His work, the Ramcharit Manas, is immortalized. The Sundar Kanda is immortalized. What he wrote for Hanuman, the Hanuman Chalisa, he said that Hanuman actually gave darshan to him, people so believe. It is immortalized. People worship that. People sing that. So he had that protection from Hanuman. And he had the protection from Rama. So both Mercury and Ketu's protection completely reversed that situation, which was from dire negativity up to a situation of where his name and his work is immortalized. So the Rishis also say that by doing this, a person can increase their longevity by doing the remedies, can increase their longevity, can actually gain wealth, can have a good life. So it is not as if you cannot get out of it, but definitely very, very hardcore remedies are called for. Very, very severe remedies are called for. And you must look at, you know, the horoscope that I shared with you about the person who was born in Abhukta Mula, you would have seen that his Ketu is with Shani. He has a Shani Ketu Yoga, which is a bad placement of Ketu. All right. And Mercury also is in the 12th house. So when he was born in Ketu Dasha, in Ketu Dasha, he experienced all those accidents and near-death-like situations. So it is a very, very big topic. This was uh, just, you know, like to give you a, a flavor of different ways of looking at Chandragandanta. And as I said that, what you must calculate that it is not only these Gandanda points, that entire pada of that nakshatra will affect you. And not only that, if your moon is at the Gandanta point between any two nakshatras, all right, the conjunction between any two nakshatras in the last pada, the first pada of any two nakshatras, and especially in those degrees which the rishis give us, the 12th degree, the 13th degree at the end of a nakshatra and the first degree in the beginning of a nakshatra. So if Chandra is placed over here, then we will affect a Gandanta experience and not just in these three, which has so far been practiced. So on that note, I will uh, end my class today and I'll be open to uh, taking any questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sarvanivath, for the insightful class. Our audience definitely appreciates it. Uh, we will now move on to question and answer session. The questions will come up on the screen. You can kindly read it out loud for the benefit of everyone and then answer them. Sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, so this is a question from Mriga Sheda 207 Devotional. That is a username. And the question is, 
if Mars planet are not good for anyone, how we can improve it if it is in the ninth house of Virgo sign with Rahu and Venus? Now, uh, uh, Mrita Sheila, your question is not really related to today's topic at all. You are asking a very general question about your horoscope. Right, we are talking about the natal moon in your horoscope. So is your moon placed in any kind of nakshatra gandanta? That is a question. So this is a question from Aryavardhan Rathore. How to consider Parivartana between Moon in Virgo in 2nd house and Rahu in Cancer in 12th house? Rahu is also Atma Karaka. Now, again, again, this I'll answer your question, but again, your question is not related to Gandanta in any way. When there is a Rashi Parivartana between uh, two Grahas, uh, if Moon is in Virgo and Rahu in Cancer, it means that after Parivartana, the Phala that will come, it will be as if Moon is in Cancer. All right. And Rahu is in Virgo. That is the Phala. The Phala will be like that. Okay. Similarly, the question uh, posted by the earlier person, uh, what if Mars is with Rahu and Venus in the ninth house? Mars is, that is a kind of a curse combination afflicted by Rahu and Mars Venus combination is bad. Again, they are not in any way related uh, to the topic in hand. This is a question by Vijay Sangavi. Uh, what if Lagna Lord Jupiter is at 29 degrees 54 minutes in Pisces? Very good question. Does Gandanta effects are there for Lagna Lord Jupiter? Yes, Vijay. It's an excellent question. See, it's a natural extension, and uh, I did not raise it because then you, all of you would have been out of uh, focus. But that is a very natural extension that if Chandra gives Gandanta results in the intersection point of any two nakshatras, that means if other grahas are placed, they will also give. And here you are saying it is Lagna Lord, and it is placed in the primary Gandanta of uh, Brevati Ashwini Jangcha, definitely it will give Gandanta results, definitely. So uh, you would see what the uh, afterbirth, what the life of the native has been. Was the person uh, not very well? Was his birth problematic? Was he ill or was there threats to life and longevity in the first 10 years or the first few years of his life? This is something you must uh, check and find out. Definitely, there would be a threat to life in these cases. So the remedy will need to be done again of the uh, of the uh, of the nakshatra lord. Okay, there is a another question uh, by Neelam Verma. If Moon as fifth lord joined with Putra Karaka Jupiter and Cancer for Meena Lagna, then is it possible to get child? Yes, of course it's possible to get child. The example I gave you of Meena Lagna, that person's fifth lord Chandra was in very deep Abhukta Mula Gandanta. Atma Karaka, it became Atma Karaka and in Abhukta Mula Gandanta. That's why it did not give. But otherwise, why will it not give if Moon is in uh, fifth house with Jupiter? Of course, it will give, definitely. Okay, there are uh, two questions which are uh, forwarded by uh, Raman Suprajarama. This one question is from M. Arpita. And uh, she has asked that, yes. Won't the Gandanda affect to the native apart from the period of Mercury and Ketu Dasha and Anta Dasha? Yes, yes, it will. See, I showed you that it can affect the whole life. You see, these are very broad spectrum. Hmm. If it is an Abhukta Mula example I gave you in the ninth house, the person is uh, Atma Karaka. All right, so the challenges happened. You know, initially, first 10 years, there were threats to longevity. Then the rest of the year, uh, no children, no home as such, no home in the sense family as such. He has a lovely house. But what is a house if there is no family or home in it? Correct. So it spans. It can destroy many areas of your life. So in that dasha, you will get effect. Some effect maybe to longevity or some other thing. But of course, the effect will be in the other dashas also. 
It can spread across your life. You saw how with the three political leaders, how their gandhantas affected the entire nation, isn't it? So definitely. But those, the Dasha, beginning of Dasha of Mercury Ketu is very crucial. That, I mean, it will show some color over there. Okay. Okay, this is a question uh, from Vijay Bhaskar that when moon in such Gandanta causing danger to life and to protect Lagna, can we listen to Atma Karaka moon in your example? Secondly, with Parivartana take moon out of misery if it exists. Ha. Moon will take in Parivartana out of misery if it is only a Lagna Gandanta we are talking about. That means we are talking about the uh, Rashi. Lagna Gandanta, as Parashara discusses, is the Rashi. That if it is in the, um, the last half Ghatika of Mina Rashi and the first half Ghatika of Ghati of Mesha Rashi. See, if we are talking about Chandra Gandanta in Nakshatras, we are talking about degrees. Right? You are not taking the graha out of the degree. Parivartana will mean that if there is a certain major change in life, life situation, then he will be able to come out of that. We have seen that you can come out of that, provided you do all the remedies. And you person with a Parivartana shows that definitely there is a possibility that you can come out of it. Now, the first part of your question is that uh, if the person listens to the Atma Karaka, now in that case, example I gave you, because it is Atma Karaka, Atma Karaka has always to be positive because Atma Karaka wants to live. It can overcome all kinds of very, very negative situation. Okay, there is a dictum that if Atma Karaka is in the 3, 7, 9, 11 houses, then even if there is a threat to life or threat to longevity, if the person is so strong-willed, he can reverse that. If the Graha concerned Atma Karaka can reverse that trend. So definitely when Moon is Atma Karaka, this person whose example I gave you, I, he is a fighter. That is shown by Atma Karaka. He comes out of any kind of adverse situation. He doesn't get squashed. So nothing much is occurring in his life. He's, you know, towards his end 50s, early 60s. But he, he is not negative as such about life. He perseveres. He tries. He goes into doldrums and comes up again. Okay. Good questions. Next. Okay, let's just take a sip of water. Okay. Rahul Malik has asked that for Gandanta Nakshatra, if Chandra lords Dusthana houses, can it benefit the native? What if Chandra is in Viparit Raja Yoga? No. Chandra in Dusthana houses is not going to affect. See, here it is not the bhava. It is Chandra's placement in certain degrees of nakshatras. Right? The degree of nakshatra is very important. Remember that. Which is causing the negativity of Chandra, which is impacting our lives. One of the areas of impact, we have seen sources of dosha from the padas of Chandra also, of the nakshatra. And we can also pinpoint an area by seeing the bhava that it lords. So if it is sixth lord, then it can impact, uh, say, you can say that uh, where his subordinates are concerned. Okay, he will have issues with subordinates people who are employed under him, maybe relatives, maybe issues with pets, problems from pets. All these things can from come, say, from a sixth house. Eighth house can show the issues from loans. Maybe you will be completely covered in by uh, loans and uh, debts and mortgages, and this can affect you a lot. Twelfth house can be expenses. It can be your bed, maybe your sexual relationship with your spouse. So many things can get affected. Right, if Chandra happens to be the 12th Lord, 12th house represents hospitals, hospitalization, your expenses, your investments, and your sexual relationship with your spouse. Your sleep, so many things. Maybe you'll have diseases of the sleep, so many things. 
Okay, Viparit Raja Yoga will give other things. If a Chandra is giving a Viparit Raja Yoga and that Chandra is in Gandanta, your question should be, can a Gandanta Chandra give you a Viparit Raja Yoga? Get the point. A Gandanta Chandra, can it give you a Viparit Raja Yoga? Okay, because Chandra's support is required for all yogas, you know. Now, next question is from Poonam, and she has asked that, please advise effect or remedy for Nakshatra Paribhartana by and with Moon, if it is Atma Karaka, Revati, Third Pada, and Mercury, Pitri Karaka, Rohini, Third Pada, for Libra Ascendant, born prematurely, eight months, unable to decide. Okay, no. So, firstly, um, if we are going to look at Chandra, so Chandra is in the third pada of Revati, right? You have to see the exact degree of Chandra. Does it fall into the Gandanta degree? So even if it is not falling into the Ganda, probably it is not because you have said third pada, look into it. So it means that there are problems, but it is not a Gandanta problem, all right? Because it's it, it will suffer from a pada dosha. Okay, now there is a parivartana between the, I don't know which house it is in, it's a parivartana between moon and mercury, right? For Libra ascendant, for Libra ascendant, uh, moon will be the 10th lord, okay? And Mercury is the 12th Lord. So uh, Libra ascendant. So is it a Parivartana between 12th and... Yes. So the question you are asking is that if there is a Parivartana, can the person come out of the Gandanta situation? Yes. That means the person will definitely a change, change in circumstances of life will happen. You have to see the horoscope in front of you to see where the change will occur. Will it happen after marriage or will Parivartana happen after the person has traveled and migrated and settled abroad or has the Parivartana happen after they've had a child or after they have uh, joined their work or a certain profession? Parivartanas are often triggered by certain activities or certain events in our life. So the other graha will then be responsible for it. Definitely, I mentioned this earlier, Chandra in Gandanta, if there is a Parivartana, it's very good. And that Parivartana should be encouraged and maintained, provided ensure that it is a positive Parivartana, that it is not negative. It is not a Daina Parivartana. If there is a Daina Parivartana, the Gandanta effect will be multiplied. Please get this point to all of you who are asking questions about the Parivartana. All right, if it is a Daina Parivartana, that is Parivartana between the Dusthana Lords. So it's a Daina Parivartana, the Gandanta effect will be maximized. Otherwise, Parivartana will bring about the possibility of a positive change in life. Then we have Vijay Bhaskar, who has, I missed Vijay Bhaskar's question. Uh, we will close after three more questions. Okay, I missed Vijay Bhaskar's question. It was something about the example I saw. Okay, so Hilly Hilly has asked that if Moon Gandanta has already touched the lineage, do we need remedies or the moon becomes positive afterwards? The effect may be experienced again. No, no, of course you must do remedy. As I told you, this is kind of a constant messy situation. All right, if it has touched the lineage, then definitely do the remedies. You find out where the concerned grahas are. Devata of the Nakshatra, Mercury and Ketu, how they are placed, which is worse. Then find the Vishnu uh, avatar from the Mercury Drishkana and the Ketu Veda Murti. Do the pujas, do the remedies. Definitely it will improve. Doing Vishnu's puja in any form, Vishnu avatars, really brings increases the sattva and uh, heals breakages, which are caused by Gandhantas. Definitely, you must do it. Yes. Vijay Bhaskar's question is that example of Mahatma Gandhi, moon and Aslesha causing danger to father of what? Yeah. So he should have. So Gandhi did do it. He took the name of Ram. Gandhi took the name of Ram. Even when he was dying, he had the name of Ram on his lips. Okay. He naturally did it. 
All right. Next question. We are done. Great. Yes, we will now uh, end the question and answer session. Thank okay. you again, Mr. Sarbani ji, for the excellent masterclass. On behalf of Raman and Rajeshwari Research Foundation, I thank you for the same. Thank you so much. And it is my honor to be associated with your foundation. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to inform the audience that the next masterclass session is, is on Sunday, October 24, <clears throat> 2021. The class will be by Ms. Shobha Mohan. The topic is Bridging Cultures in Jyotisha. See you again there. Also, if you would like to stay informed about the activities of the foundation, we encourage you to visit our website, www.rrrf.in or join our Telegram channel. Namaste.